some color here now. Isn't it nice? Do you, do you get out in the field? Um, not, no, not yet. Oh, Oops, it, and it, I did. It, I just moved. Rain. We don't know. You know what it does? Right. It it makes all of our wrinkles go away. Oh, yeah. I think <laughs> Good. I carry around with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We we like that a lot. Good. Wow. Nice to meet you, Anna. I hear good, great things about you from everybody. So oh, you're that, that makes and me feel so good. And what a beautiful thing. showed me your resume. What an interesting life you've had. You know, it's really been fun. Oh, and God, you know the I interesting guess. thing? I never went to college. I never went to broadcasting school. And for 35 years now, I've had the most fun career in radio and television. You went into something else just as, as even worse? I never finished high school. I I another subject to go, and I didn't finish. And then the war years come along. I knew right. hell, I might not come back. The hell with it. I never mm -hmm. went back. So well, that happened a lot to the people in you know what they call the greatest generation. Yeah, I know. My mother never finished high school either, no but she was the most well-read person I ever knew. Oh, well, I love to read. I read, read, read. I love that. Yeah. But, uh, uh, it's been a fascinating life. I've had a wonderful time in spite of it. And wonderful things happen. Great people have come in and have helped us to do things I couldn't do, didn't know. I had a wife who's been right. My you took advantage yeah. of opportunities. Yes. I think that has a lot to do with Right. It. I think How that's exciting. everything. Yeah, and I think we've got a man up above who takes who could care of me because I've been doing so good myself. Yeah. Well, you but know what it, they say we, about people who make plans? They make God laugh. Because huh? we, you can't, you can't plan life. You can try. But. Well, we've had so <laughs> many wonderful people come in our lives that helped us do things I couldn't do without their help. Right here, she's helped me so much with the museum. Ah. She's been my partner right in the way. If idea I didn't have, she came up with one even better sometimes. So, it's been a wonderful life to, together. I can't. It's wonderful. But so it, how did you meet? Did you have common interests? Uh, I tell you what, we were both married before. Uh -huh. uh, she'd gone through a divorce. I was married to a gal that was in music. That was my feel. I was a folk singer and we were in music. And then I get to the point where I was tired of traveling around the country, uh, wanted to do something else. And meanwhile, in the search for music, I discovered the Shakers. Ah, and so I that's never heard of them. And, but I went up there, we became great friends. I, at that time, they were dying out. Uh, they were going to sell the village, and I thought, it's so beautiful, I can't do that. And uh, I told me, you know, it could be a museum, but they didn't under I think they thought a museum was a single building. Yes. And so I took them up to Sturbridge to show them what could be, you know, a, a, a village, a historical village. And uh, then, uh, uh, I talked to him about preserving theirs, you know, and uh, I was in good terms with the uh, president, vice president of Sturbridge. So I told him my dilemma, and I asked him if they'd help me. So they came up, they spent a couple of days, they walked around, they, sh they showed the, the checkers and the lawyer, they had what could be, <clears throat> and uh, they said, this young guy's on target, you've got a beautiful place, it's on your own grounds, you've been here for years. We Sturbridge or assimilated village, we're not even real. I mean, we brought buildings in from all over the country. You've got everything going for you. So that's when it became a, uh, uh, we so finally got it to make a full-time uh, museum and, and they put me overseeing it. They so, did? Yes. Even though, you, now you two are not Shakers. No, 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 ah. we just, but I never worked for better people. We loved them, I was there for, Oh, more than, I could count the years, over 25 years. And uh, uh, of course, during that time, unfortunately, I went through a divorce. My first wife didn't give a damn about it. She was in the music. She didn't care any about that. Ah. And then she fell in love with Mr. Wonderful, some guy that I couldn't stand that worked for the Shakers who had been ripping him off and a real con mm. artist. Oh, you're kidding. He don't Ooh. record all this. I don't like to put any, but he's dead and gone now. But anyway. She finally thought he had bucks, I guess, because she ended up marrying him, and he found I didn't have Jesus. anything without the, <clears throat> what he was getting from the shake. He didn't have any, but anyway, we're back friendly now. So, you know, we. Oh, well, that's good. That's good. So that's good. So how did you and Nancy meet? Well, anyway, I decided I'd never get married again. I would turn it off. I dated, but once anybody's serious, I, you know, it's good. I, I know it's happy, but I've been through there once. So mm. again, I had parents without partners. You know, a group that 
single that. single yeah. people, and I and whenever anybody got serious, I say, you know, I've been there. If you want to keep friends, fine, but I've had it once. That's enough. Mm -hmm. And anyway, um, uh, the shaker said to me one time. They said, but we're getting so few today. Is there some church you could take care? We don't care where or whatever it is, wherever two or more are gathered, we feel God is there. So I took him to the congregational church because somebody had taken, one of the girls I dated had taken me there and it, was, it seemed like a friendly group, so I brought him over. And Nancy was a soloist. She had a voice like a gold, a beautiful voice. So you were a singer? Yeah. Ah. How wonderful. So anyway, the, uh, they take us over the gorgeous voice she had. And, and uh, they said, do you think she'd ever sing any of our shaker songs? I said, well, why don't we ask her? So we went back and I introduced her uh, to the shakers and told them who I was and wondered if she'd ever consider singing any of the shaker songs. The shaker's written hundreds and hundreds of songs, you know. Yeah, yeah absolutely very beautiful, people. very simple. So she said, yes, she'd agreed. So they said, well, if you come out of the village, we'll teach you some of our songs. So that's how we got acquainted. And she'd been ah. through a, uh, a divorce. I had been divorced for I don't know how many years. Mm. And boy, I thought that's the greatest. And maybe I, maybe it shouldn't be so <laughs> turned off about getting married again. Boy, it be quite an experience to be married to her, you know. Anyways, that's how we, 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 that's we came together. And of course, when she heard my dreams and, and and knew what was going on. She was teaching at the time. She was an elementary school teacher at that moment. Uh -huh. And uh, so the Shakers took on working with us. She became education coordinator. And we worked together and we had a great time building up the numbers that came through there. And when we left, there, there were over 50,000 a year we going mm -hmm. through there. I know That's I know amazing. it's dropped way, way down, but of course times have changed. So I don't blame the people that came after it a lot of the times. Mm -hmm. yeah. But anyway, we had a wonderful time, but also I knew that when that was through, I had to have something going for me. So I, I had been collecting Indian things for years. I've always been a collector of things. Mm -hmm. I had old wagons and sleighs and over the years. But, I but anyway, about that. Yeah. I wanted to create a museum. And uh, luckily, a good so many things came to pass, I have to believe there's a creator, you know. Uh, I didn't inherit the farm that my grandparents owned, and which I used to spend every summer on. And where was that? That was in Bridgewater, Connecticut. Okay. And uh, it was a, not much of a, it was a, a nice some acreage, or acreage and everything. The old house had burned down. We had cottages we were living in, and, and I, I had uh, moved, a, uh, bought a place on a, a well, what happened was the Connecticut Light and Power uh, were putting in a hydro dam, and oh. it meant that some of our land was going to be flooded. Oh dear! But some of it wouldn't. But the house next door were neighbors of ours. They had sold out to the Connecticut Light and Power, and I bought the old house. And I had it moved onto our property with the idea that eventually that would be my home. Well, as time went on, I realized that everything changed when the lake came in. All these wealthy people <clears throat> moved in the area and began buying a property and building these great big homes. Uh, and um, the, uh, and, and in the town of Washington, which wasn't too far away from Bridgewater, another museum had opened up. And I said, well, it's going to be hard. It'll be in competition with another museum that's starting up, same as ours, Indian Museum. Uh, so uh, we decided uh, uh, we'd sell the property. and. Luckily, the property that had been worth diddly when my grandparents, once the lake was around it, it became very wealthy property. So we sold it for a darn good sum. And see, everything happens you know, for a I, reason. I, meanwhile, I had plans. I had this big lilac collection because I was always interested in trees and, and I worked once for the Arnold Arboretum. Yes, you yeah. did, Arnold and, Arboretum. Uh, yeah. They had one of the largest lilac collections in there in the world, you know, there. Yes. And I began collecting with the idea that if we lived there and developed that, I would open that to the public too, you know. Oh, so you, you were planting lilacs yes. there in Connecticut yes. on the farm. Yes, I had over 200 and some odd varieties. When we left, we, for uh, two different seasons, Nance and I opened it up to the public and, and had wow. the public come there. But we decided with another 
opposing museum. They were good. They were doing a good job, but you know if we'd be in competition, that we better do elsewhere. So we sold out the property. We sold it for a hell of a price because wow. the lake was mm -hmm. in, and all these wealthy people moving in, and that gave me the money to buy the property here. So you were in Connecticut, and yes. you um, you were growing the lilacs, and you were thinking about making yeah, an Indian th museum I was at that time. That was going to be our what we're trying to do now. You Your know? museum Except there. Except we, we dropped the lilac trying to do that. that well, how did you how did you ever get interested in Indians in the first place? I was when a little was boy. That? I was uh -huh. living in in uh, Newport, Rhode Island. Then we lived in New, the little town of Patuxent, which is right outside of Providence. Yes. And one day a teacher told us, I was in the second grade, she said, I have a surprise for all of you tomorrow. If you have a surprise, somebody's coming here you're going to want to meet. But I'm not going to tell you who it is. Mm -hmm. Be sure you're here tomorrow. So the next morning, we were sitting in class, and all of a sudden there was a knock on the door. A teacher said, I think this is our visitor. She went to the door. In this walk, this Indian, all dressed in his regalia. Wow. Uh, his name was Chief Sachem Silverstar from the Pequot Nation. And he used to go to schools and talk and give talks. And he had us all sit in a circle. And he said to us, he said, you know, he said, every one of you here is a very important person. Everybody here is something you're going to do important <clears> in life. <throat> and he said, I want you to listen to me because you are very special. What a gift. Tell me if you fill up in the dark, but anyway, he, he, Every, the kids were fascinated by this guy. I mean, it was charisma he had, you know. So all the children yeah, really the kids, enjoyed this? We all this? sat around in a big circle to listen to him, you know. So of course mm. I went home and I told my family what I'd met this wonderful Indian man, you know, and everything. Because when he left, there were some little girls began to cry. They didn't want to see him leave. Oh my goodness, really? Yeah, yeah, that kind of a charisma, you know. Well, anyway, when I told my sister and my parents about it, my sister said, well, did you tell them how good he was? Or, oh, you know, kid fashion. No, I didn't. Well, you got to. You got to write him a letter and tell him how much you appreciate him. She was my, <laughs> she was three years older than me, but she was my surrogate mother. She stepped in, and I was her little baby brother, you know. So I, with her help, I wrote him a letter, told him how wonderful I thought he was and everything Aww. else. And, she mailed it for me, knew how to do it. I didn't know how to mail a letter at that time. Hell, I was in second grade. Anyway, pretty soon I got this beautiful letter back from thanking me for writing him. Oh, my. So that had a, a big impact it on did. you. It did, and that became, Indians became everything I want to know about. Well, on my grandfather's farm, the perp that I placed, I eventually inherited, we found, I found a, my first arrowhead. It's on the case out here. I have it. Yeah. Anyway, that turned me on, and, and of course, I had an, Indian, uh, an aunt uh, who was my uh, father's sister, who was in the, the Indian. Kind of, she was interested in Indians herself. They lived in Rhode Island, uh -huh. and I remember she took me to some Indian function there, and one and, and so forth. Well, anyway, uh, it. From that time, everything uh, Indians were everything to me. So when I was growing up, I started collecting things. I see. And, I uh, wondered if that was unusual at the time. I mean, did um, did people know a lot about Indians then? Yeah, or? and of course, Boy Scouts and all that would go on. Of course, I was based on a lot of Indian philosophy of life. So and anyway, a lot of people uh, don't know yes. that, do they? About no, Boy Scouts? No, no. And uh, you sure. know, the, the, <clears throat> anyway. Um, as the years went on, of course, I got more and more interested, and I figured that someday I was going to do something with the Indian. And of course, when I lived with the Shakers, I knew they were all old and getting old. They would probably die out in my time, which they did. In fact, the, the elders, when she died, it was her request that I uh, uh, one who scattered rashes, which Aww. I did. My son, Daryl, and I did. My son from my first, I have two sons from my first wife. Anyway, um, this is how uh, I began clicking with the idea that eventually, when the Shakers died out, I'd have to do something else. Right. Well, luckily, everything worked out. I tell you, there has to be a, a mm -hmm. heavenly father. There is. There is a. We sold the property just at the time when we were winding up at Shaker Village. Wow. And they gave me the money to be able to buy this property. Now, when I bought this, this was a horse arena. Uh -huh. It was in dreadful shape. There was big holes in the roof. I brought a friend of mine in. There's, 
tea at one time and a pigeon dropped on him and he said, Thompson, damn it, you set me up, you know, you made a big deal out of that. Isn't that supposed to be good luck or something? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we were able to take the money to lift it up, put it on a, on a frost, uh, uh, repair the foundation, put in a new roof, so, and uh, of course we had to design the museum. And I was thinking like at Cheka Gallery uh, Museum, I had a number of buildings open, but the meeting house where I had the primary collection when I first began, before we opened other buildings, I had the collection that was all around, arranged around a room. So you walked in and of course you went around on these tables. You know, you looked at the stuff on the table. Later, you know, we developed, opened up of the buildings and everything. but. I sort of had that in mind here, and Nancy said, no, but that's not the way to go. She said, it's got to be an element of surprise. Each step, you would have a new adventure. And I said, you're right, absolutely right. I'm stupid, why didn't I think of that? And she was the one who designed the museum the way it is now, you know, where, where well, we walk. Great. Have so you Nancy, been through you it designed all? Have you through? the museum. I've, yeah. I've seen a little bit. I've right, been uh, sure. waiting for you two well, so, so I could see more. That's how we put it together. But that's yeah. how it all began. And meanwhile, we met so many wonderful people who have come along and helped us to do things I don't know how tell to do. Me. Tell me. Yeah. Tell me. Tell me about some of those people well, who have uh, helped you. Uh, I've got to think, that, so down many of them now, I've got to think how some of them are. One of them was the, the Bullock family. Uh, and what happened was I was collecting Indian things, and they had an Indian store in Attleboro. Mm -hmm. Andy was just a kid about 18 at that time when I, when I first met the Bullocks. But the dad was a wonderful guy, and a dad and mother, and he had a wonderful store there uh, where they sold all kinds of Indian things, including antique Indian things too, because they were. So anyway, he became quite a uh, quite friendly with them, and um, when I finally decided to start the Indian Museum, about that time, the dad had put out the Indian Plume Trading Post. It was a, a place that sold all kinds of Indian things, uh, uh, artifacts, and, and, and of course they had all kinds of furniture, you know, to, they lived with, you know, cases. So it came just at the right time. So many things have happened that I have to believe there's a, there's a, there's a higher power. Those cases and the, and the dad saw me were all available at the time when I needed them, right at the time when I needed them. In fact, we had a wonderful adventure because I had to bring the cases up here and it's a winter day, and Andy, uh, Eddie, uh, and his uh, brother loading them up for us. We load them in the truck. I rented a great big moving van, and we came up on a snowy day. And we got to the stable out there where we wanted to put the stuff in. Uh, it was all snowy. We got the stuff, and when we went to go out, we, I thought we were stuck. Well, Eddie, who gave it the gun, and we came out of there like a ruptured duck, you know, out of the, out of the <laughs> <laughs> Is he here? <laughs> He's a character, let me tell you. <laughs> so that was great because the timing for the Bullock family buying another yeah, everything worked trading out perfectly. Post, it's just and fantastic. as we've gone on, that family and we've been so connected that I can't tell you how pleased I am, Nancy and I, that we got Eddie. I mean, um, Andy has come to be our new director. So Andy Bullock, one of the sons Andy of the Bullock was really family, and is all now Bullock running this. Us. Eddie, all of us were all helpful, and all they were buying and selling Indians, so a lot of the collection out there is things we purchased from them. Oh, I also nice. had so many wonderful people have come into my life at just the right time. Uh, I met a man who has a, had an Indian store and hooks it. And we became friends. I used to love to visit him. And he sold a lot of, you know, tacky Indian stuff down below for kids and everything. But we became great friends because of our mutual interest in Indians. And one day he said, but I want to show you something. He took me upstairs and he showed me this wonderful collection of Indian baskets. He said, are you interested in buying any of these? I said, yeah, geez, I love them, but I, you know, I can't afford them. He said, no, don't you worry. You, what's your interest? You tell me. And he said, I'll take those out of there and put them on this side of the attic and you can pay me as you went on. Wow, what a nice so man. So he had one of the greatest collections of Apache baskets and Pima baskets, a wonderful collection. And he told me for a song, at that time, the sherbet hadn't hit the fan as far as Indian things were, Indians were selling at a low price. It wasn't until two months after that, Indians began to go sky high. I could never afford it then. 
Really? But so, he told me yeah. things I couldn't believe, you know, $25 for a pair of beautiful beaded moccasins. Uh, the biggest basket I have in there, I think I paid maybe on a beautiful Apache basket, it's worth thousands now. I, I think uh, I paid 250 for it. The Indian, the, the boys were, the Bullock boys were buying and, and selling. I bought an awful lot of things from them. And so uh, I'm sure Eddie can walk through and then point out a lot of the stuff that, that he and his brother so you know, today is still out there. Anyway, mm -hmm. everybody has come along, it seems, at the time we needed them. It does it's seem It's been an like amazing it. thing, and I think today we have the best staff we've ever had here. That's We've got a wonderful guy sitting right over there who, uh, this guy right here, I'm sitting there with the glasses on, <laughs> looking real smart. <laughs> so, but I'm wondering, as you've, you've pulled together this wonderful team of people who yes. are carrying on your, your collection and, and they're going to curate it in the future. What we, happiest thing I know is to see the circle come around and know it's back in the hands of the Bullocks who I'm sure will do their best. Uh, Andy's uh, uh, sister-in-law does my bookkeeping. I'm a lousy bookkeeper. I'm not a smart guy when it comes to figures. She keeps us out of jail. <laughs> <laughs> He does all, all our books, and she's a wonderful artist. Yeah. I don't know how the girl can do all she does, you know, well, uh, you when it comes to You have a lot of angels. Figures. You have a lot of angels around you. Well, I'm yeah. surrounded with them. Yeah. What, what do you and Nancy see for the future? How, when you're looking like 50 years down the road and other people are here running the museum, what, what are your dreams for this place? Well, I hope I can keep a... a, 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 a as a manager, the crew we have right now, we've had the best crew of all. That guy's a wonderful guy. They're all, we've got wonderful people who are working here. So that's important. Yes, the, it the is. The people who run it and are important. And now having Andy bring the family back in. And the wonderful part is, uh, well, it was a sad part that his dad died, but the money was raised from people who made gifts that they were, were generous enough to do the big pavilion out we have out there where when we pick powwows, everybody can be undercover. Did you get out in the field at all? A little bit, I saw that. So so you want to well, see those powwows continue? They, and they were very generously dedicated to Nancy and I. Wow. But the dad is one should get the, you know, the family should get the high, they were the ones who put up the funds and did everything before it. So that's the Whirling Thunder so Memorial Pavilion. So that has been a, one of the closest family I've been with. So I can't yeah. tell you how pleased I am to see the circle come around and come back to the hands of the Bullocks. Yeah. And what else do you have here at the museum on the grounds? Because how this is a okay. pretty large place. Well, we, we, uh, we started a thing called Medicine Woods. We have a, a path that goes through the woods and we have all different plants and, and, and trees and things used by Indians for food, medicine, and dyes. Ah. That's another thing we have. And then recently, Nancy and I have started what we call a Child's Storybook Arboretum. Ooh, that now, I told you how in my early three days in my early life, I worked for the Arnold Arboretum. Yes, Are you yes. familiar with that in Jamaica Plain? Yes, the Arnold Trees Arboretum. Trees all over the world. World famous. Now, it's what did famous. you do there? I just worked as an ordinary worker as a kid. You know, just a young like guy there. Groundskeeper? The, uh, my 18, 19, around those ages. Ah. Well, anyway, when I started this, uh, this uh, operatum, I was trying to collect unique trees from around the world, you know, that had a story behind them. The, ar the arboretum here yes. that you started? Ah. I, I, I think it was uh, uh, Trees of the Tale, <laughs> K-A-L-A, of course. I like the Trees and, of the uh, Tale. So uh, one of the trees I thought it'd be neat to have is a cedar of Lebanon. Now, Cedar of Lebanon goes back in early biblical history. King Solomon's temple and right. was built from it. The boat that Christ was in on the Sea of Galilee when they had the storm, remember, and they quieted the waves. That was uh, built from uh, the wood of Cedar of Lebanon. Uh, anyway, it has quite a history to it. So I called the Arboretum to see if they could tell me where I could buy because I'd never seen them for sale in the nursery or anything. I called them, I told them what I wanted, I told them how I had worked there years ago. Yeah. I remember they had some beautiful Cedar Lebanon and was, could they tell me where I could find a nursery that would sell me one? Well, a few days went by and phone rang and I was outside and Nancy called me and it was the operator. 
they told me that uh, they had looked me up. I guess they found I was legit. I had work there. We had a museum that was 100% legit. It was, you know, non-profit and so forth. So they said, we have a seedling, and we will make you a gift of it. Oh. So yeah. anyway, they ha we have a nice seedling, and a wonderful gal, Maggie, and her boyfriend, uh, Maggie's with us today, and she and, uh, uh, they went down, and the arboretum had it beautiful, all bald and burlapped and done up for us. They brought up, they not only brought up, they planted it for us, which I'm pretty frail now. I get to have a job getting around doing things. Mm -hmm. So we have that out, and we hope that's going to continue to live here. I know they're a little tenuous, but, you know, the ones at Shaker Villas lived for a few hundred years there. Really? And I'm hoping that we're not that far enough that we might be able to make it succeed here. But it's a nice tree, and it, it lost its needle the first year, and I thought, geez, I've lost it. We're in the spring here, I'll come back. So I'm not sure whether Wonderful. it loses needles uh, ordinarily or whether that just as happens in the wintertime. I'm, I forget how, how that works out. But anyway. Uh, That's great. My, what other trees do you have here? Are they, are they all native to New England? No, no, uh, no they're other from uh, some around the world. When I worked at the oh. Arboretum, I had an interesting day. There was a, a rainy day. Uh, a snowy day, we couldn't work out, and we worked inside uh, 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 making labels. Another young guy and I worked with me. And the boss came down and said, hey, I have a little job for you uh, guys to do today. Would you help me out? He said, right, we, we want to send out letters because we have seeds that the Arboretum on one of his expeditions came back from a tree that everybody thought was extinct. Oh called the uh, metasequoia. It's one of the dawn red, uh, mm -hmm. it's a dawn redwood. It's a very early tree. That, one of the that, really big yes, sequoias? Yes, really? a great one. And, and uh, the uh, Arboretum had an expedition went over and brought back this seed. Well, the seed was to be sent out to different nurseries to try out to see if the tr tree would be viable. We had no idea whether it lived in this climate or not because it was, had, you know, everybody had thought it was extinct. So anyway, um, uh, this young fellow and I were sat down and, and they gave us a, two platters, each with seed on, and these little stamped envelopes that went to different nurseries and arboretums. They were sending seed out for these people to try out to see if the tree would live in this climate. Yeah. Well, wow. it did. Wow. And they grew them on. And not long ago, I was, I, I, I've got a couple of, we have out there and. Uh, now, nurseries have them for sale now. They're quite, they're very hardy. In fact, we have one that in the wintertime is in a low spot, it stands in the water. And I just said, that'll never live, you know, mm -hmm. it's a larger, but not, not a, a, came through perfect. Didn't affect it one bit. I'm so we have that. two knee, knee, uh, Cedar Lebanons, uh, I, I mean, uh, medicine choir out there. That's amazing. So they're out there on the property they're now. They're on the property now. And people can walk the now That has a unique grounds. story to it, as I just told you. Then we have the famous ginkgo tree. Ah. A few guys, maybe this gentleman knows what ginkgo below is. Some of you guys are oh, yes. a little bit used use it. Use it you know. for memory. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, the ginkgo tree has quite a reputation, you know. It, it's, uh, it's, uh, it goes back many, many years. And, anyway, and where is that native to? Well, that, in China. And in, 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 uh, in that area over there, wow. the ginkgo, you know, those trees grow over there. Anyway, China. We, wow. we have um, some good-sized ginkgos out here, and then we have a dwarf one up in the arboretum we created because we want, you know, we don't want this too great big tree because of the limited space there. Okay. We have three, as I say, very good ones on the other side of the other little museum over there. Hmm. You know what I'm wondering about, Bud? How did you find out so much about plants? How did well, you when I worked at the Arboretum, I loved it. And that's always been my hobby. I always loved trees and plants, and, I, and that's wild plants, and I knew a lot about them. But I'm mm -hmm. self-taught. I have people around me here, like Margie, who drives us around, who's ma majored, in, and uh, uh, she wanted to go into forestry and so forth. She knows them right and left. If I fall short, she can tell me. Other people do. <laughs> anyway, um, but you have um, you have the medicine woods too. Tell me about the medicine woods here at the well, museum. Well, the medicine woods are, are, 
uh, some think we moved in there, some Azadis put in there, natives in this area, but didn't grow then, actually, we put them in there. Uh -huh. And we put uh, other trees and uh, uh, plants in there, down in there, too, so that kids, when they come through on a tour, can learn something about the trees and shrubs that are native to this, this part of the country. That's just fantastic. Yeah, but the Arboretum, of course, is different, because that's we even brought in the foreign stuff. Had a little, st right. little, uh, opposition from some of the people that were connected with the museum here who were, Indian, who were Indians that didn't want me to put anything that wasn't native to this area. Uh, yeah. but, but this is an arboretum. This is universal. This isn't confined to just New Hampshire. We're, you know, we're trying to unique trees of the world that are interesting. Yeah. So you're doing something even bigger here. You're, you've got all the preservation of the Indian artifacts, but you're also preserving plants. You're preserving the trees. Well, yes, we, we want this children's arboretum. I know I can't mm -hmm. compete with the animal arboretum. That has thousands of trees. I mean, I'm just, but we want to uh, focus this uh, on youth, hoping we get young kids to, to, to learn about nature. Yeah. Also, I have another project that I'm trying to get going. I, we have a friend of ours who uh, uh, writes, uh, she's connected with Audubon, and, and I'd like to put a, oh, maybe another, maybe 15 or 20 bird houses bid so that we could attract an audience of people who are interested in birds and might come out and visit the museum. We're trying to find what are the other strings in the fiddle? What are other things we can do that will bring the public here. Indians, on and up, we need other groups from other uh, walks of life that come and visit us too. So I'm so, hoping we can make that happen. We have a good a friend of ours who writes articles in our Sunday paper about birds, who's a great friend of ours. She's going to help us out on that project on the, on the bird houses and see if we mm -hmm. can get some Boy Scout groups to maybe create these birdhouses we put out in the fields and that's to, to a great track, idea. Uh, another, that's a another great facet. Idea. Yeah. I love mm -hmm. how the two of you really are teachers. You know, Nancy, you you were a professional teacher working in schools and Bud, it seems like you are a teacher uh, of a teacher's lifelong nightmare. learning. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't have her academic background at all, as I say. I, no, but it's the it's the love of the learning that you both have that you're passing on. If I run in my high high group uh, 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 diploma, I have to go back and take another math, which I don't think I'm going to do. I'll bet you could teach a lot but you of know people what? who are actually teaching. At 96, which is my age now, <laughs> all the people I went to school with are dead and gone. All these guys that have the honors. Mm. So they left a guy that couldn't make it <laughs> to carry on. Well, Not looking back heritage. over it, you didn't plan your life. You've had all these amazing experiences well, you know, and amazing careers. Have, is this the life that you saw for yourself or that you would have liked to have? Well, see, I thought music was going to be my field. I traveled around the country for a, a couple of years. I spent like on a nine month tour in the Midwest covering Oklahoma, Nebraska, Iowa, Kansas, you know, doing yeah. schools. Yeah. It was a terrible taxing thing. I, was, I, was, uh, I can show you the, the itinerary. I was uh, figuring 13 concerts a week, which meant that three days a we had to do three concerts, one oh after goodness. another in different towns. Oh my goodness. He could have lost his voice. It was exhausting. He could have. We yeah, have friends of ours of who are, in fact, I studied with a man from the Metropolitan Opera, Alexander Kiptis, because I wanted, at one time thought music was going to be my career. And I'm glad I didn't continue on, but I, you know, I reach out to other things. But so the music led you to the Shakers. Yeah, I was looking for a uh, unique uh, songs that I could tell a story about. And I went there on a wonderful day, sunny day. I went in the gift shop. At that time, they were keeping the village open, or they were limited numbers, just to let the public know that there was no secret society that had, ah, was doing something evil that were open to the public and, and you know, uh, honorable. And uh, 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 one of the little shaken sisters took me on a tour of the village, Ethel Hudson. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, I went through the uh, few of the houses she showed us to, and then I was, she left me, and I was walking around the village, looking around, and I thought, it's, I just love this place. It's the most beautiful place. It looks over the hills. It's just great. Mm. 
Have you been to Can Have you been to Ch Canterbury? Just past it. I haven't been into the village it's itself. Fun. It's but a it, beautiful spot. And it ties together everything that you had already loved in your life, right? Yes, With the nature, was there. The nature, the and music. So anyway, I, I, I left Essel. I was walking around thinking, what a beautiful place. And I went by the chapel, and, a, and Sister Lillian, who was quite a prominent uh, uh, elder there, stepped out, to, you know, question who I was. I wasn't trying to be... Really? She just was curious, you know, people, and I'd like to know who comes to the village. And I told her I was uh, uh, up there looking at it. I was uh, wondering if they take us any kind of music, because that was my field. And, mm -hmm. and uh, anyway, we got talking. She said, well, it just seems what happens. I'm the organist here. <laughs> and I have another shaker sister here, not blood sister, but, you know, mm -hmm. sister, who plays the piano. We play duets. And would you like to come in the chapel? So I went in the chapel and they played some beautiful, I remember meditation from Thais and some of the beautiful things they played. And she was a kind of a churly, she was full of fun woman, you know. She said, no, some, i tell you something, we've done something for you, now you have something for us, we want to hear you sing. And I said, I don't have a thing, I don't have my guitar, I don't have anything with me, you know. She said, young man, you're not getting away with a thing. She said, we, we're going to play, we're going to let you pick out a piece of music, we'll play it for you, and we want, we want to have you perform now. So I did. And we had a great time. And, and uh, anyway, we became friendly on that very day. Uh, and uh, I told her I had a dad who was a soloist in churches and so forth. I said, he and I sometime go concerts together. And I said, it'd be kind of fun for me to get him. We'd come up sometime and we'd sing for you and you'd sing for us. And did he? So he came up, we had a wonderful time. And my dad was quite a guy. He, was a, he used to do a wonderful comic recitation uh, uh, that he added to it. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, and of course he had the sisters and sisters, you know. He, had a, he was quite a guy, but a personality guy. Anyway, we became vast friends. But then I had tours, I had to go to the West and do some of that. But all the time I was away, I wrote to the Czech assistant because I wanted to know everything I could. Tell me about this, tell me about that. I was trying to collect Czech things at the time, thinking that, you know, maybe that we could preserve that village. Anyway, the friendships grew and grew, and finally, of course, they invited me to work for them, and I, I, was the founder of the museum. After I got Sturbridge interest and got the lawyers, yes. and the, and the Sturbridge confirmed that we were a legit. You know, everything was. It was a wonderful place. You you you, you should be have it preserved. It became Shaker Village Incorporated, and I was made the, the director of the museum exhibits. Wow. So, so you my, create. You helped them create. Yeah, that. I created the the uh, the first the Canterbury Shaker yeah. Village. And the first building I used as a meeting house, they let me use that because I wasn't being used. They had another chapel they were using, so that was dormant. So that, I opened that as a building and had the tables. My dad came up and helped me. I had a wonderful mother and dad. Anyway, he came up and helped me build the, the uh, backdrops and, the, and, uh, and on the tables and cover them with burlap and put on the exhibits and everything we had. Well, as we went on, of course, it grew, and then the shakes let me open more and more buildings. Wow. That's and uh, so, anyway, as time went on, of course, I, uh, and I went up there to live, uh, my first wife did, that didn't appeal to her. She was, music was her field. Yeah. And the, in the Shaker Village didn't interest her at all. Yeah. Anyway, it ended up that uh, we finally broke up. We have two kids I love, two sons. Um, and uh, one of them is still does tour guiding at Shaker Village. That's and, wonderful. Yeah. And then that's where you and Nancy met. Now, have you? Did you ever sing together? Because you loved her voice. Yeah. With the Shaker yeah, music. Yeah. She was a. She, uh, I thought she was a better singer than I. <laughs> but anyway, Are you a better singer, Nancy? <laughs> she had a beautiful voice. A beautiful. We. Really I fell in love with her voice. Yeah. We've had a wonderful, wonderful life, and I couldn't know what I'd done without her. It's certainly And I couldn't know what I'd like done it. without the Bullocks. It certainly seems So like to see it. this thing come around, it's like it's come full circle. Well, and you've I'm, done an awful lot And it came at a time when I'm ready to take the long sleep 
we've, I think we've had the best staff we've had at all. We've got a wonderful people right here that work for us in that village right now. Gentlemen sitting over there. So you're they, feeling pretty good about what you've created here with the Well, I love what we've done, Museum. but we want it to go on. We don't want it to, yeah. to fail after we go, and I think we're in wonderful hands now. With a great staff and, and, uh, and a great leader with, with Andy and, and, and the Bullocks mm -hmm. all behind us. It's a, as I say, to hope for the best. As I say, Andy's sister-in-law keeps us, me out of jail, keeps my book straight so I don't get <laughs> screw up on him because my math isn't the greatest. Well, I think that the both of you have been a really wonderful influence on everybody here, the things that I have heard about the two of you. Well, we've had more fun and the together. the pictures, and yes. I, the unfortunately, we're both in the Alzheimer now. And uh, it's a sad state of affairs at this point. Well, it's the pits. yeah, yeah. She's been a little longer than I have, but I'm right, right on our coattails, so we're trying to do what we can for each other. I couldn't have, have a better wife. I think that's what it all comes down to in the it's end. It's been a wonderful experience for yeah, us both. Love. We've loved every bit of it, and we feel now we're in the wonderful hands because we've got a wonderful staff, mm -hmm. and we have the bullocks behind us. And, and you've put out so much love, and now it's coming back around to the both of you. So I think that you've done seemed, some wonderful things You know, things it's wonderful because it seems like, oh, we've had occasional dubbers come into our life that didn't work out, but we've had... As I say, the best staff we got right now, and and uh, now with the, uh, Andy and and coming aboard and and uh, you know we feel everything's mm -hmm. great. You've you've got a wonderful team, and you we've you've had done a wonderful such a time. Wonderful I'll tell you, it's been a wonderful life. I couldn't have asked asked for a better one. Thank you both for sitting down. Well, with thank me. you for being interested in. No, I want to know do more about it to tell it about it because we're we're. Yeah. We want to thank you for your interest. Well, I think you're inspiring us. You, you both wanted to share knowledge and information and the things that you're passionate about, and you've done a beautiful job of that. Well, we had so, a lot well, of fun. Let's yeah. hope it yeah. lingers. Well, I tell you, we couldn't do it without the good friends and good people we've yeah. made. And I think we have as many friends as anybody could have. I think so, from what yeah. I've heard. And now I think we're going to meet some more. We're going to well, go down will. and have you lunch. Will. Oh, good. Yeah. yeah. Good. Yeah, so you get to introduce us to your, your friends in the yeah. restaurant down yeah. there. <laughs> Maggie's been a wonderful help to the old people here. She takes us around, takes us doctors, takes us appointments, does everything for us. Oh, and, that's great. And, uh, well, I think you two that, are getting back a tiny been, portion of the everything. love that you have given out. Because uh, really, well, we, you've it just... come back to us tenfold. Yeah. It's, oh, We've had yeah, so many yeah. wonderful people have come to help us do things we couldn't do. It always goes both ways. <clears throat> yep. So as I say, yes. I love the staff we got and, and uh, That's all the so people good. we've been connected with. What's it? It's so good to have good staff. Oh, I know. To feel good about the people that are. You know, you like shift through a lot before you finally settle down to the ones that we have. But we got right now the tops. I I feel about it. Yeah. Yep. Wow. Thank goodness for that. Well, thank you for coming and showing an interest in us. But boy, you have a wonderful, I've read your resume. Boy, you've done some oh. unique things in your life. Well, you guys are right up at the top of the list now. We don't we come anywhere <laughs> near. <laughs> Andy, that, no. Boy, that is Well, I, I understand that you, you know Ken Burns. You're friendly with He's him. He's a great friend of ours, a wonderful guy. He is the only person that I have ever interviewed that I was so nervous before I interviewed he's him. He's a neat guy. I could Why? barely speak because I think of him as he's history himself. I mean, he's like, if, if I were to go back in time and talk to, you know, any, any like Lincoln or Washington or, or anybody in American history, to me, that's Ken Burns now. And I could barely speak. I mean, my voice was shaking. I kept oh, swallowing. He's the nicest guy in the world. Oh, yeah. He came to us when he was just a kid. In fact, I had no idea at the time. I underestimated his great ability, but through the years, we've become great friends. Yeah. He and uh, my son, Daryl, are very close friends. In fact, we're supposed to meet with Daryl Cannon and, uh, 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 in another month or so. You know, he's so oh, tied up. He, uh, but I don't think Nancy and I will make it. My son will make it. But Ken made a little little video 